Grant. So we have um, we have your UFO dome. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, we have your horseshoe. Mm-hmm. And um, I think we have one of yours. It's like a marsh print with a heron. Uh huh. And uh, that's really a pretty pretty picture. And yeah. what is your name? I'm Terry. Terry. Uh, but yeah, that's right. I forget. <laughs> that's we, the new norm, you know. Hey. That's Aaron. And that's Barbara. Hey, Barbara. How are you? She's helping make a, uh, we're trying to make a little documentary showing some of my works around That's there. awesome. Yeah. Now, you did uh, something in Five Points not too long ago, right? Was yeah. that behind Groucho's? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rubble Without a Cause. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is your um, studio, well, it's, it's still there. But it's still there, but, you know, because of the thing, the yeah. virus, they've got everything pretty much locked up. Right. Fifty feet. And... Uh, and then it's sealed around the edges. And that neon worked perfectly for about 45 years. Yeah, neon's long lasting. Yeah, it go forever, you know, if, you'd, and if the electrodes don't get corroded or anything. Right. That's Any, probably what happened, the electrodes. Uh, no. Back in 1973, I was driving down Taylor Street, and I looked over and I saw this building here. It was on Ag First Bank. And they had just torn down a building on this side and had kind of smoothed out that wall a little bit and put a fresh coat of paint on it. And I thought, wow, that would make a great mural wall. So I pulled over. I was driving my Volkswagen van, and I pulled over into the parking lot, got out, and walked over and looked at the wall. The people in the bank thought I was some kind of communist saboteur, <laughs> called the police, <laughs> so, I'm just going to want you to know that. I just want you to know that you know, the bank didn't call me up and say, we want you to put a painting of a mural or a tunnel on this wall. No, that's not how it happened at all. I told them, I want to paint a tunnel on your wall out there. And they said, you want a what? I said, I want to paint a tunnel, a big tunnel on the wall so it looks like you're looking through. And they said, uh, well, let us think about that. We'll get, we'll get back in touch. <laughs> and so about two months go by, I didn't hear from them. There you go. Uh, if you send me an email, it's not something I might could get to you directly, but I probably could connect with somebody that would have what you're looking for. Well, this is great. Okay, thank yes, you. Sir. Nice Tony. To Tony, you. right? Terry. 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 Yes, okay, Terry. Okay. Nice to I'm see blue. Y'all have a great day. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I was just talking to Terry. He's with this lighting company, and we're trying to we're trying to discuss a different way of lighting the sun on there. And uh, because the sun, when I was living in, I moved to L.A. in 2005, 2006. And while I was gone, they came in here and screwed around with this thing and ripped all the wiring out, turned off all the lighting. And the whole place is in darkness at night. This total darkness, you know. Well, I don't know. It just really, that's really inconsiderate. And uh, this place has been a, a great place for people to come at night if they needed a place just to sit. And, yes, to watch the sun, you know. And sometimes you'd come by here at like 3 o'clock in the morning and there'd be people sitting here in the parking lot just gazing at this. And, uh, yeah, right. It looked very real at first, you know, like when you were out there on Taylor Street, it looked like it was really here. And, um, yeah, I did that bolt and crack thing back about mm, 15 years ago. And, uh, this, you'll see the, uh, when you see that, you'll realize that I had the idea for the uh, rubble. rubble without a cause. I had the same idea, even there's a crack, just like rubble without a cause is. And that crack has been there since this mural's been here, which is 1975 it was done. It took a year to paint. And uh, these rocks... These rocks, to make the rocks more realistic, I, I used actual 
there's a place up behind Lake Murray where the spillway is at Lake Murray. And there's a deep gorge. And a lot of these rock formations were in that gorge behind Lake Murray. Those, the gorge was formed when they blew, they blew using dynamite. They blew the gorge out. And it's at the spillway behind the dam. And uh, I would pack my lunch and go out there with my paints and spend the whole day just painting the rocks. Then I'd take those, the painting of the rocks, bring it home, grit it off, and put them up there. Those rocks are based on real rocks. That's why they look like real rocks. It's because they like rocks. They, are, they are copies of real rocks. We'll talk about the, the guardrail. Uh, guardrail. There used to be a, just like I have rip wrap, wrap over in the, in the fire hydrant there. I went to the quarry and bought a whole bunch, a couple of tons, several tons of riprap and piled it back there. And then I thought, well, it sure would be nice to have uh, some guardrail going around the riprap. So, it, see, when you're doing a, an illusionistic type mural, you have to, and you're trying to create an illusion, you have to use objects that you see in the setting that you're trying to paint. And these objects trigger in your brain. They trigger in your brain what this is that you're looking at. And when you put the guardrail there, and you put the riprap, and you put the highway sign, you think that you're near a highway or a highway tunnel or a construction site or something. So the idea is to put the viewer instantly in that frame of mind. Also, there's the clearance sign out there. It says clearance 30 feet. And uh, rock formation over here on the left. That's what that lighter area that you see going up here, mm -hmm. that's called a dike. And in, uh, in rocks and mountains, a dike is, uh, is where magma pushes up and splits rock open. And then often whatever the magma is is not the same consistency as the rock around it, and it'll be a different color. You have to do things like this. If you really want to make something look convincing, it has to be scientifically correct. Everything I paint is scientifically correct. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that works very well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I recommend looking at it from straight ahead. Let me show you the handprint again. I went, I went to the art store and bought some clay, and I made it into a flat <gasps> thing. And I made it into a flat thing, and then I pressed my hand into the clay like that. Then I photographed it with my SX-70 camera and painted the handprint. So that really looks like an imprint. Because I, I did an actual handprint in the clay and then photographed it to get real, make it more realistic. The reason this area right here looks kind of awkward is uh, there was a bunch of electric boxes there and everything, and they took them away. And see, I, I never painted what was behind them because that came that came after the mural had been here about 30 years. They moved those boxes.
this thing's at a kind of inconvenient spot, <laughs> but. It looks like it belongs there. <laughs> Let the water out should it rain. Here you can see, this is where the, the mural was vandalized. Come here and show up under, show how it's been ripped away here on the bottom. Some vandals did that, and they they ripped all the neon out of there. I paid for that neon all myself and had it installed. And uh, right there, see that little yeah, that little round thing. Uh huh. That's what the star. That was the morning star, of Venus. Oh. And oh. Uh, and it was, I did that using optical fiber. Nobody even hardly hardly anybody even knew what optical fiber was back in 1973 and 74, but I drilled a hole through the wall and put optical fiber through there, then put a high intensity light, just like you buy at the drugstore, you know, high intensity light shining on the other end, and the, the uh, optical fiber transmitted the light through the wall in a tiny point of light. Wow! Here's the rip wrap. There's the guardrails. I had to install, install these posts. Looks like somebody's actually hit it. <laughs> nice. When I was a boy, when I was about 12 years old, my father's office was right there. This was the insurance commission back in 1950. South Carolina Insurance Commission. My father was the fire marshal, and his desk was in right there, right inside there. They didn't have air conditioning back then. This was the air conditioning. They had those windows, you know, and the little balconies there, and that, those windows would be open, and they had fans, big fans, all throughout the place, and the fans were running around, blowing really hard. That's where paperweights came from. You ever wonder why nobody has paperweights anymore? It's because we don't have fans. And so they had paperweights to keep their papers on the desk from blowing out from the fans. Nice. Yeah. 